What is up everybody, what is up, and welcome to my TNA Impact Wrestle Review. I did not do a review last week. For some odd reason, I think I just fell off that week. But, we will kick off the show with, um, what else we get to The Expedition of Gold tonight, I'll get to that later on in this review, but. Rosemary and Crazy Steve, the decay, what against gets Brandy Rhodes, and Moose, or Mini Moose as they want to call it. Since last week, uh, Brandy Rhodes had confronted the Decay, and Moose came out for the save her and stuff. Uh, they had a match, which, you know, uh, Brandy still grew as hell, but at least she did a, a good drop kick. You know, her chopping people and doing the Moose punches looks really bad as she's green, and we, we all know that and stuff as she's green, but Moose didn't. Brandy did pick up the window. Moose hit uh, Crazy Steve with the game changer to... Uh, win the match. I don't know why they still went with this whole Brandy Rose versus Roseberry thing. Maybe just to get that out of the way real quick. Roseberry is a knockout champion, but who else do they have Roseberry to face right now? They, they her and uh, Jay did put on a great match for the knockout championship. They really did. I did like that match. But Gail Kim is still out with an injury. I don't know what the other woman that could have a title shot against her. Maybe Brooklyn Hex, but I, I don't know. It was a good match, and, you know, which is also, I'll get this out of the way, also, Cody Rhodes will be on the show next week for TNA, I guess, to thank Moose for, uh, helping Brandy and stuff in that match. I don't know if Cody brought the Bullet Club with him on that TNA, which I thought that would be really cool to see, but we'll see what Cody Rhodes does next week when he comes to, uh, show up on a TNA, which, my God, Cody Rhodes is in so many companies right now, I don't know where he'll show up next. Eddie Edwards is in the ring. As um even when he up when he came into the building says I'm not I'm here to kick Davy's ass. And, you know, my best friend and partner turned his back on me since uh, Eddie Edwards did lose the championship last week with the rematch for it and stuff. <clears throat> uh yeah, after he did uh, get a rematch for it next week until Davy betrayed him and Angelina Love as they beat up him and his wife that last week on TV. He pretty much called Davy Richards, you attacked my wife. And as a lie, that should not be crossed. And he had words called, called him out and take his ass with me like a man. Until Angelina Love came out and told Davy pretty much, uh, uh, you know, Davy would cut gets ready when he's ready to, get, you know, face you. But where were you, Eddie, huh? Why should you be so mad? Where were you when Davy tore his ACL? It was out for a long time. Or when I was out, when I was gone for over nine months pregnant, you didn't call us, you didn't text us, you did nothing. And so Angelina Love called, pretty much introduced the American Wolf, Davy Richards. As Richards came out there, Angelina was talking, and Edward says, well, why don't you give Davy Richards his balls back out of your purse? And so Richards took the mic and said, you know, you never cared about him and stuff. I created the wolves, he said. I made the wolves of the nation. And he says, I'm going to expose you for the little bitch that you are. And so Eddie Edwards uh, ran out to fight with Davy. Security pulled them apart as they brought reaches. And this isn't over. This is only the beginning. It's going to be a street fight later in the show. <clears throat> so that's going to happen right there. Uh, you're going to see a lot of these singers go out of the show. But uh, Braxton Sutter. As he was at this um, bachelor party for Mike, Mike made it through with all his son and best friends. His son didn't know any of these guys, any, any of these were. And he just pointed to this guy named Kitty over there. And uh, this older dude, he says, that guy's old as a <laughs> he's That guy can't be 28 years old. But he said, you know, yeah, he spent too much, he's seen some things. He spent too much time in the sun. So they have this bachelor party. The Hardys. As they, like I said last week, they... We're in Me Tijuana, Mexico. They were teleported last week by Van Car wanted to begin the expedition of gold as fans love the Hardys in Tijuana, Mexico, traveling to the arena for big cheers. They wanted to know the promoter was and they talked to this guy and said gracias and stuff. And they told him the promoters in the back. Until Conan. Conan was back and you know, so you know we can sell bootleg some of the Hardys and stuff, man. We we got stuff good. We can make a lot of money of this because they they they're here to work. They want the tag team championships, and they want—they don't want any money. Jesse Goddard with his Eddie Kingston, 
which I don't know what they're still doing with the DCC thing, but they were outsmarted by uh, Jesse Goddard's as um, you know, pretty much. Which I'm saying is DCC lose a lot of matches on themselves, except that they don't have the numbers advantage, and they were outsmarted by one dude. So I guess they'll be going after him next. They had gun sides up. Tyrus began the fact of life thing as he called out Eli Drake as they wonder what happened last week. Like, why did why did you leave at Tyrus Rich as he's Eli Drake? Why did you leave me last week? And uh, Eli Drake said he's mouth briefers don't deserve to hear my voice since he was silent for a minute. As Eli Drake said that Tyrus said, You didn't clear it with me to face DC, DCC in a handicap match or drop the ball when he cashed in the briefcase, which I don't know why he cashed it on EC3. He did love beating him. With a baseball bat, but that's that. I wouldn't. You didn't even pick a title. And EC3 pretty much said, uh, Tyrus, you know, I've been watching his back and stuff, but you know, too uh, busy summoning cheeseburgers out of your fat mouth. Until Drake says, I'm the guy that runs the main event, and you're just the guy that watches him. That's your career's been, and that's how your career's gonna be. And he talked about uh, Tyrus in his talk show as Tyrus grabbed him by his throat, and he says, You don't own. Me, you were talking about owning people. I'll see you next week when I beat you in the ring. See you next week, boss. He said, Uh, Team out of Mexico again. Conan pretty much made the match official. He's the promoter, so it would be since they're not getting paid, they don't want any money. They will be going against uh, Psychosis and Psychosis. And super crazy for the tag team championships. Uh, anything else after that? Which I will say they did have the match, even though it wasn't technically a full match, they only show clips of it and stuff. As even the Harris came out, they all say obsolete and everything. As Vanguard had to make a phone call and talk to the uh, wrestling, uh, well, female wrestlers in the back. Which, and here's another thing also, they had to block out a referee's face during this whole match because why? Because he was under contract with Lucha Underground, and they showed his face, Lucha Underground would be pissed, which would probably end up like that last situation with Lucha Underground and TNA, when that whole Hernandez thing happened about a year or two ago, when Hernandez was still under contract with TNA, not TNA, he was still under contract with Lucha Underground, but he showed on TNA did and pretty much fucked both pro companies over right there. Uh... But the Hardys did win the tag team championships, and they, 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 I guess the other guy told them that uh, the Hardys have won the titles, and Conan was pretty much pissed. So we gotta get those belts back and everything. And so they, the Hardys ran to the room where Vanguard One was, and they left. And Conan says they all disappeared. We didn't disappear. I was like, what was up with that? So uh, they didn't know what happened. The Hardys went back to the compound, and now we must go to Egypt to collect more gold. As next week they will go for the Mid Atlantic Tag Team Championships. What's gonna happen? I don't know. They had a bachelor party with uh, Ali, Laura, Maria, and Sienna. Which that did that go out well? But uh, the Hardys, though, I will say Conan. It was cool to see him back on TNA again. He hasn't been seen on TNA in years, and you know he's not on Lucha Underground. He's not part of Lucha Underground anymore. Last time it was just they killed off his character. And I was busy the last time Conan was on Lucha Underground, but Lucha's doing his own thing now, doing several options in Tijuana, and it was, maybe he'll be back in TNA. It'll be good they can get him back. Conan is, you know, he knows things, so I, I like Conan. And it was cool that, the, it is really cool also that the Hardys are very over in Mexico with this deletion thing, because even though a fan asked, so like, are you going to delete me behind? Meek, delete Meek Mahan. So, <coughs> hello. Cool. <coughs> Good. Hold on. Hey, hold on. I gotta spit this up. Hold on. Okay. Spit this cold up. Okay. Give me a sec. Sorry about that. I will get through this real quick. It was cool to see Kota back. See the one against Brooke, which Brooke is still a little bit green in the ring, and they did two did not click in each other. So uh yeah, they did not click very well. 
it didn't click very well. It was a good match, but it wasn't really that great. They said we went to that match, and probably would have had this Roxy girl show up and stuff. Mike Miz says, you know, we're going to go back to the tape, okay? Eli Jordan grabbed the cameraman. He says, listen, Tyson, you're going to put your hands on me. Liz. I'm going to beat the hell out of EC3 last week. He said, it's not going to be over until I say it's over. Uh, Bobby Lashley came out looking for a new opponent who was going to face for the world championship. Until, you know, he doesn't care if you're a wrestler in MMA, he wants you to come out. Until Josh Barnett came out, which he didn't get that much of a reaction. As, uh... Brother says, good to see you, Bob. He says, you're not the world champion that you're supposed to be. And, uh, hold on. <coughs> hold on. I'm, I'm trying to. I was rude. Can't get my fucking phone call out right. I can't get my phone call out right there. What was up with that? Yeah, you hug up. Alright. Alright, and like I said, though, I'm sorry about uh, doing this phone call during review, but uh, I know I may have skipped over a thing or two, but last year, Kevin's MMA, a wrestler, and Josh Barnett came out. And, you know, it was the last people you wanted to see, but he tried to tell me that he wasn't worthy of holding that belt. And last year, told Barnett, you know, I face a lot of idiot fathers that don't play to these fans until actually, you know, he welcomed him to the impact zone every day, he shook his hand. Ain't no bars at the top five for 20 years and stuff. As he walked through, I guess, there's Andre Ascosi or something, but last year said, you know, there are rules in MMA, but there are no rules in wrestling. And he told him to take his ass backstage and have a seat. Barnett put his hands on him, thinking, as last year told him, like, you know, you could fight him anywhere he wanted to, but Barnett he's not afraid of anyone. He's fought all over the world. And he told Lashley that, watch with that title on the line. And once he got a champion, you really are. the fans chat, do it, do it, do it. Well, actually, said he'll fight anyone for this title, and until um, Barnett tried to hit him with an arm bar, he says next week I get kicked. He says you know it's gonna be tough when ass whooping. Listen, I don't know about Josh Barnett that much and everything, and which I don't think he got bigger reaction that much, but he's supposed to be. All I know he's an MMA fighter. They say he wrestled in Japan. Listen, the only thing I know Josh Barnett is this: he is just. On Access TV every Friday night with Jim Ross doing commentary for New Japan Pro Wrestling. That's all I know about him. I don't know about him wrestling in uh, New Japan that much. I know he's an MMA fighter, but that's it. Uh, Sutter, let's say he went back to that uh, bachelor party as everybody was passed out. Bennett tried to say something until Sutter put the strip on top of Bennett, took a picture of him, and sent it to Maria. Uh, so that happened. Since they're doing that wedding thing next week. Davy Richards when he gets Eddie Edwards in a street fight, which is a really great fucking brawl if you ask me. They both beat the hell out of each other with fucking chairs and shit. Edwards doing a damn suicide dive all the way into the crowd. Because Edwards got chairs and started beating up Eddie Edwards with it then. And so he hit him with another chair and he kept beating up Eddie with just, just beating him with it. His wife tried to come out and save him and take out Angelina, but Angelina knocked him down until uh, Eddie, well, Angelina had handcuffs there and handcuffed it to the ropes until uh, Davey was going to hit, I guess, uh, Alicia, uh, Eddie's wife, with a chair until Eddie went over there and covered her as Richard took the chair and slammed it into Eddie Edwards several times and beat him up with it. And Angelina loved her to put a chair over Eddie Edwards' head. And Dave Richards hit, hit him with it, the chair on top of his head, then slamming it to him as Alicia tried to get to Eddie but couldn't. So, uh, I don't know, pretty much Davey Richards and Andrew Love kind of made out in the ring there. And then Josh Matthews, well, Mr. I'm the greatest play by the commentator right now, which I don't know if he's trolling or this is a work, because he's been saying a lot of bullshit a lot lately. But he pretty much called Davey Richards a rotten son of a bitch. And the end of the show. So it was a really good brawl at the end. I will say that. Uh, you know, I know there's a lot of news going around in TNA from the Japan deal they have with uh, Noah right now. I heard some of be going back to the old Impact Zone. Supposed to be a lot of change. I know Jeff shared through a lot of things in the UK and stuff. And I know they're trying to get people back. You know, they really should, Jeff Jarrett should, really should be saying, uh, make an Impact great again. Listen, we just wanted, TNA wants to be back. 
some back to the level where it was. I know that 2010-11, if you ask me, in 2009. Anyway, I want TNA to be great again, but make, say make it impact great again on that slogan list. It's too, some people are kind of too close to that Donald Trump thing with his, and I know a lot of people are fans of that right now, so you're messing with some uh, serious stuff right there, because people don't really like, don't like that slogan as it is anyway. I don't know what Jeff Jarrett's doing. I know he's supposed to have a lot of control now, but hey, what do I know? We'll just have to find out and see. But I'm out. I see you guys later. I'm tired. Peace out.